All right, today we're going to go on a bit of a ghost hunt. But we're not looking for spirits or anything like that. No, we're hunting for something that's way more real, and it could be hiding deep inside the one device you trust with literally everything. Your calendar, your private conversations, your location, your entire life. We're hunting for a ghost in your phone. So, is your phone secretly spying on you? It's a chilling question, right? It sounds like it's ripped straight from a spy movie. But for people like journalists, activists, and lawyers all over the world, this isn't fiction. It's a terrifyingly real possibility. We're talking about a class of super sophisticated spyware that can turn your phone into a 24-7 surveillance device. I mean, it can record your calls, read your messages, even activate your camera and microphone, all without you ever knowing it's there. And the most notorious of them all is a piece of software called Pegasus. So yeah, let's dive into this. Now, it's absolutely crucial to get this straight. Pegasus, it's not your everyday computer virus that you might get from some random pop-up ad. Not even close. This is a cyber weapon, and it's used with surgical precision. So think of it less like the common cold and more like a sniper's bullet, aimed at very specific, often high-profile people. It's a tool built for one thing, espionage. And it was designed from the ground up to be the perfect, invisible spy. And that one idea? That's really our whole mission for this explainer. Because as invisible as the spyware tries to be, it can't be perfect. Every little thing it does, every server it pings, every file it creates, it all has the potential to leave a tiny digital trace, a fingerprint. And the key, the whole game, is knowing exactly what those fingerprints look like and, more importantly, how to find them. So, how do you catch a ghost? Well, you don't use a proton pack. You use a specialized digital forensics kit. And in the world of cybersecurity, the gold standard tool for this exact kind of hunt is called MVT, which stands for the Mobile Verification Toolkit. MVT was created by the incredibly smart security experts over at Amnesty International for one very powerful reason, to give researchers and potential targets a way to fight back. You can think of it as a complete digital forensics lab just for your phone. And the fact that it's open source, that's huge. It means its code is public, anyone can look at it, and it's trusted by the global security community. There are no secrets in how MVT works, which is exactly what you need when you're hunting for something that absolutely thrives on them. But I want to be really clear here. This isn't some simple app you just download from the App Store and tap scan. No way. This is a serious forensic process, and you can see that just by the setup. You need a dedicated computer, and they really recommend using Linux or Mac OS to make sure everything's compatible. You need the phone you're investigating, a good cable, and enough free space to handle a full copy of your phone's data. Just that setup alone tells you we're moving way beyond a simple antivirus scan. We're getting into a deep, methodical investigation. Okay, so with our toolkit all ready to go, we can get to the first absolutely critical step of the investigation. And before we can even think about analyzing anything, you have to follow the number one rule of any crime scene. You have to secure and preserve the evidence. In digital forensics, that scene is literally everything on your phone. You can't just start poking around on the live device. Every single thing you do could change or even destroy the very clues you're looking for. It's like walking through a crime scene and accidentally smudging the only good set of footprints. The professional way to do this is to create a complete, forensically sound snapshot of the device, completely frozen in time. And the process is very methodical. First, you connect the phone. Then, you create a full backup. And here's the single most important detail in this entire step. That backup must be encrypted. Why? Well, because an encrypted backup is a gold mine. It contains way more data than a standard one. We're talking deep system logs, detailed app caches, network connection histories, stuff that's normally totally inaccessible. And it's in those hidden corners where a ghost like Pegasus often leaves its faintest traces. Now, what's really interesting here is how the strategy actually changes a little bit depending on your phone's operating system. For iPhones, that encrypted backup is everything. The way iOS is built, it's very controlled, very sandbox, means that backup is pretty much the only way to get the deep level data that MVT needs to do its job. But for Android, which has a more open setup, a direct connection using something called the Android Debug Bridge, or ADB, can often give you an even better, more comprehensive live look at the system. So you've got two different paths, all based on the device's design, but the goal is exactly the same. Find the evidence. Okay, the evidence is secured. That digital snapshot of the phone is safely stored on our computer. All the prep work is done, now the hunt really begins. MVT is about to comb through gigabytes of data, searching for those specific, telltale fingerprints that Pegasus leaves behind. The clues that MVT is looking for. They have a technical name, Indicators of Compromise. 
or IOCs. Honestly, the best way to think about these is like the spyware's digital DNA. Every single time security researchers at places like Citizen Lab or Amnesty's own tech team discover a new piece of Pegasus infrastructure, like a malicious website it connects to or a specific file name it uses, they document its unique signature. These IOCs are the fingerprints, and that list is constantly being updated by this whole global community of defenders. And this really lays out the process perfectly. First, MVT reaches out to the internet to download that fresh, up-to-the-minute list of clues. It's kind of like giving a detective the latest case file with all the new intel. Then, the real heavy lifting starts. The tool just meticulously cross-references everything in your phone's backup against that list. Every text, every browser link, every network log, just searching for a match. And finally, it generates a bunch of detailed reports flagging exactly what it found, if it found anything. So after the scan is done, which can take a little while, you're left with the most important part. You have to interpret the results. This is the moment of truth. This is the point in our ghost hunt where we finally check the traps and see if we've got anything. So the results usually fall into one of three buckets. No matches, that's obviously the best possible outcome. It means MVT went through all your data and didn't find any known traces of Pegasus or other spyware it's looking for. Then you might get suspicious files or anomalies. Think of this as a yellow flag. It could be something weird, like a record of a strange text message that's since been deleted. It really requires an expert to dig in and investigate further. And then finally, there's a confirmed IOC match. This is the digital smoking gun. It means MVT found a direct, known fingerprint of Pegasus on your device. But here it is. This is the single most important and frankly pretty sobering takeaway about these results. A clean scan is not a 100% guarantee of safety. Pegasus is constantly evolving. It's in this high stakes game of cat and mouse with researchers. A brand new version might be out there using new domains or new techniques that nobody has discovered yet. So a clean scan today just means your device showed no signs of known infections. The hunters are always, by necessity, just one step behind the ghost. So, no matter what the verdict is, clean, suspicious, or compromised, the investigation doesn't just stop with the report. What you do next is every bit as critical as the scan itself. Let's break this down real quick. If your phone comes back clean, your job is to stay vigilant. The best defense is just good digital hygiene. Keep your operating system and your apps updated all the time. Because those updates often patch the exact security holes that spyware loves to exploit. And if you have an iPhone, turn on lockdown mode. It can add a really powerful extra layer of protection. Now, if the results are suspicious, preserve that evidence. Save those MVT reports and get in touch with an expert right away. And this is crucial, do not reset the phone. That's like digitally burning the crime scene. And if you get a confirmed compromise, the absolute priority is containment. Disconnect that phone from Wi-Fi and cellular immediately to cut off the attacker's connection. And then just stop using it. Now, if you do find yourself in that second or third category, you're not alone. There are world-class organizations out there dedicated to helping. Amnesty Security Lab, the folks who made MVT, can help validate your findings. The Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto, they are the leading investigators who expose these threats to the world. And Access Now's Digital Security Helpline provides urgent, practical help for high-risk people like journalists and activists. You know, the hunt for Pegasus is this constant, evolving battle that's being fought in the shadows of our digital world. Tools like MVT give us a powerful fighting chance to pull back the curtain and expose what's hiding there. But I think the ultimate takeaway is this. Digital security, it isn't a destination you just arrive at. It's a constant process. It's a state of vigilance. The ghost is always out there, always looking for a new machine to haunt. And as we keep entrusting more and more of our lives to these devices, the real question becomes, what are we doing to be ready?